We will see you then. That's also a thrill. Okay. And we have a couple other recognitions and thank yous. Um, Grace Steinke, uh, she placed first in the fire safety poster contest, but she's actually a very artistic young lady. She's a fifth grader over at Evergreen, and she also contributed to the First Place School Meals Rock video, and she did design um, the T-shirt um, for raising awareness of child abuse and autism. So she has designed multiple t-shirts that are out there in the community. So we commend her for her. I can't wait to see her artistic abilities as she gets older. And one other announcement, um, Sarah Mum, our nutrition team leader at the high school, actually is got an award recently, and that would be for the school nutrition manager of the year um, in that so and that's statewide so we have some amazing staff in our our district that we're very happy to have them with us right okay thank you very much moving on to reports and discussion um, we have a report on the middle school student council and this is just a report it is not on the consent agenda I would know agenda Um, here, have a seat. <laughs> okay, I'll get it I'm Caitlin Clausen, sixth grade teacher um, and middle school student council co-advisor along with Jen Dinger. And I have three of our officers whoa, with us today. Chloe Lahaki is our president, Olivia Hall is vice president, and Anna Marie Johnson, historian. They're going to tell you what we've been up to. Okay, so before school even started, Student Council helps with school pictures during the registration days, and we help during both open house days. We love to volunteer. The HMS Student Council has 50 amazing members this year. Students have to apply to be in Student Council by answering 10 questions about how they display Viking values and are chosen through a blind scoring process. Okay, so to start off at the beginning of the year, for homecoming, um, we had dress-up days and dances. The HMS Student Council sponsored a week of dress-up days to celebrate homecoming. We also made our own masks in, to walk in a parade. Um, in December and February, we did additional dress-up days in April, and we threw a glow-in-the-dark party for 6th and 7th graders. <coughs> Student Council helps with the HMS PCG with the middle school fundraiser. This year, we raised approximately $13,500. In addition to the kickoff assembly, student council members love to help during the deli delivery day. We also help coordinate and, of course, celebrate at the Green and Gold celebration. Money raised from, from our fundraiser goes towards purchases to help our school. We used some of our fundraiser money to fund staff grants. We had over $4,500 in requests this year but we could only fund ha about half that amount. Officers spend a lot of time considering the impact when considering funding. It was a valu valuable experience to learn about the process of allocating funds when there isn't enough to go around. In the end, we were <laughs> able to fully or partially fund each of the grant requests. So for peer reading, um, this year we partnered with Evergreen Elementary several times to help read or help kindergartners and first graders. We really enjoy partnering with them. Student council members open doors for parents and guests each night of conferences. We also show the staff our appreciation for their hard work and long hours providing them dinner on these long days. HMS had the honor of welcoming Mr. Charlie Grossclass to speak our, at our annual Veterans Day Assembly. Mr. Grossclass was drafted into the Army and fought in Vietnam. Mr. Grossclass spoke to the students, staff, and visitors about what it means to be a veteran. The assembly was filled with beautiful music and moving words. This is an assembly we all look forward to every year. When someone asks you, what are you thankful for, what do you tell them? For many of the HMS students, their response includes family, friends, and food. The HMS Student Council wanted to spread kindness this year for baking over 100 pumpkin pies, 120 to be exact, to donate to the Lacrosse Community Dinner. 
In January, the HMS Student Council stayed after school on her early release day for an afternoon of new experiences and a day of fun. The day included a chance for the people in Student Council to grow their leadership skills, team building sc skills, and setting personal goals. We also worked on plans for community service projects. The Student Council loves to appreciate our fabulous teachers at the middle school. Like in the past years, we've hosted staff luncheons to show how much we love our teachers. This year, we had a Hawaiian party and invited the Apothic food truck from La Crosse to help us cater the event. All of the staff had a great time, and the students loved being able to celebrate and serve the wonderful staff that we have at HMS. Our student council leads several different community service initiatives. These projects are entirely student-led. The officers do all the planning, organizing, and promoting with a group of our members. Pullman Middle School celebrated World Laughter Day on March 19th. All students received a candy airhead with a sticker to help recognize th this day. Many students chose to participate and wear bright slash neon clothing and signed a banner at lunch. It was terrific to see all the neon at school on World Laughter Day. It was a great day at, day at Holman Middle School. So for my community service project, I chose to make care packages for the families that had babies in the NICU at Gunderson Hospital. My group made 16 baskets for these families and to raise money for the supplies, my group sold concessions and we collected donations. We're very thankful for the donation that we got from the Holman Rotary Club. <coughs> the baskets had gift cards, snacks, drinks, and magazines, and several self-care items. We also made cards for the pediatric oncology patients, and we gave them blankets and gift cards and other items for their prize box. This project made us really happy thinking that we were able to put a smile on someone's face that may be going through a hard time. Nola and her group assisted with the annual HMS food drive to support local food pantries. We collected 142 jars of peanut butter and jelly for the Holman's Hope lunch program. A small portion of the other items were saved for the HMS food pantry. The remainder of the almost 3,000 items were picked up by the Holman area pantry to stock their shelves. It is amazing what one school can achieve when they come together for a cause. Being in student council is hard work. The end of the year trip is a chance to celebrate our accomplishments this year and plan for the year ahead. This year we will plan on going hiking and playing some team building games. We will also elect our new officers for the 2018-2019 school year. Also this month, the student council will be leading four different days of tours for the new incoming fifth graders. We adore new friends and love showing off our HMS. Well, thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> any questions by the boards? Questions? Oh. Not a question. Any questions? I just, on behalf of the board, I just want to say thank you so much. We always enjoy having young students here presenting, and 13,000 as a professional fundraiser has a really good job, 13,500, so kudos to you. There's work to be done. Um, but thank you very much for all of the things that you brought, because without you, those things wouldn't have happened, and you made a difference, so thank you very much. We appreciate hearing from you. Then moving on to the high school um, student council. Okay, well, we're trying to set this up. My name's That's Olivia it. Torres, and I'm the student council president this year. I'm Gwani, and I'm just on the team. <laughs> and then before we start, I just really want to take a second to thank you guys for letting us come speak to you tonight and let us share our year with you. So, all right. The first event that we have for our school year is homecoming. Um, we partnered with Holman Deca again 
and we organized the homecoming parade and we had 70 entries this year which is the biggest entry number ever and we decided on a theme and it was our masquerade ball theme every day at lunch we had lunch games for all of the students we obviously did dress up days again which is so much fun for everybody we helped with the decorations on the commons for the dance and we held a co-ed volleyball night so then we attended a leadership conference and the officer and a few other people attended and we learned about ways to improve our student council team and ways we can incorporate the school into what we do. And then another event that we participated in was iFeed. And for those of you who don't know what iFeed is, it's a one day food drive at Logan High School. And community members get to come in and be on packing teams, which the high school student council partnered with FFA and Dr. Mueller was our captain for the team and it was a morning filled with fun and packing meals to be sent off to Nicaragua and Puerto Rico. So then we also supported Lacey Snodgrass's family and we teamed up with Home, Home and Deca and we supported Lacey, her parents, and her five siblings because of their house fire that was on McHugh Road and we had a backpack day and we raised $150 from that and then we also had a miracle minute and we raised $700. At Christmas time we always try to do something for a family in need and this year we raised some money to purchase gifts for a family in need and I was one of the people who got to go shopping for that and then we had a group of us wrap all the presents together and it was so much fun it's so rewarding just to give back to someone who really deserves it in our community um, $150 went towards clothes and other little things for the student and then we gave the grandmother a $100 festival gift card and a $50 gas card and then every year we we learned about calling all elves at one of our leadership conferences and it's a thing in December where we pretend to be elves for the little kids and they call in and we ask them what they want for Christmas and it's just a way to spread the holiday cheer and then we basically just take over the 200 wing and answer all these calls and it's a good way for the team to bond. And just a few weeks ago we had our annual blood drive again. We had 90 participants this year and 87 units of blood were, was donated, which was over our goal. And the Red Cross gives scholarships to the seniors who have donated and we were able to give two, $250 scholarships to some seniors who donated blood this year. And then just last weekend we had our color vibe and it we had our we reached our goal of 100 racers and it was just so much fun we had a good weather and at the end we got to all throw our color up and it's just a good way to get the community involved in our team all right and that's all we have so thank you so much for letting us come speak to you guys again thank you oh ladies they want your picture you can't get away that quick. And were there any questions from the board? Again, we just really appreciate your yeah. willingness to come forward and share, but also what you did through the year. We know that we have a dynamic group over there and appreciate all that you did for others. So. Thank you. Then moving on to Family Career Community Leaders of America. This is one of those nights as a board we get to hear from a number of students. It's always fun. We did not send our video in. We just made it today. Can we still pull it up to show you? Or is that I illegal? Think, no, I think. Oh, it's not illegal. You can still show it as long as it's an appropriate video. <laughs> and, yeah, I just had to and it was on the agenda. <laughs> Do you have to push this so to talk? Sorry. That's okay. No, you're fine. We're learning. Will this get you there? Miss Baker. Yeah. Do you have to push? You only have to ask him if that's the Um, we do not have to do this. You'll be fine. They don't bite, I swear. Sure. I'm fine. 
Um, these guys here. don't fight. They're really good. Cool. Works out great, right? <laughs> Pull it up wherever you're at. Excellent. Yeah, he fights a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So who do we have over there while we're here? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you introduce yourselves as she's talking? Um, my name is Peyton, and I'm a senior. I'm Laura. I'm also a senior. And I'm Janie. I'm also a senior. So FCCLA stands for Family, Community, Career, and, oh, Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. This year has been a good adventure. We have served our community by participating in the Hope Supper, ringing bells, doing bake sales during parent-teacher conferences, and participating in the color run. Um, here are some pictures of what we've done so far. That was from. <laughs> 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 That's from the color run. <laughs> that from this last weekend, or yes. 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 <laughs> you better tell them who that is. <laughs> That's Mrs. Bakeberg. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> a good sport. Yes. Purple though. Um, and throughout this year, we have made a lot of really great memories and a lot of new friends. And we've also learned to be leaders with great responsibility and respect for our really wonderful community. And yeah. <laughs> That's it. Thank you for your time. How many members do you have? Um, Ooh, how would we have one, two, three? That's, that, that's <laughs> your membership? A lot of people have joined, too. Uh -huh. okay. I would say probably 16, 17 right now. We picked up some, and um, we have the original that are right there, too. So a good group. No complaints. Great. Well, thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And picture. You're going to want to do a picture, and this will be on the web page. You know that. It will show up on the web page. But thank you for coming forward and sharing a little bit. I think this is a new group for us, so yeah. appreciate that. we appreciate you coming forward. Thank you. Then moving on to 2018-19 um, meal prices, Mr. Gasper. Good evening. Um, usually we bring this to the board in July for... Um, your approval. Um, this year we have some exciting news as Jay's trying to find the issue paper. Um, we do have one prepared. Um, but we have some exciting news. Um, as you know, in years past, um, with the Healthy Hungry Free Kids Act, we were required to raise prices every year, a minimum of 10 cents. So that is what we've been doing. Um, this year, however, when they recently passed the new budget, Somewhere tucked in that big stack of papers was a uh, exception rule to that, where if your nutrition program had a fund balance, thank you, had a fund balance as of uh, January 1st, 2018, um, you were exempted from that requirement. Um, and on January 1st, we had a fund balance of $583,000. Um, so we uh, immediately wanted to bring this to the board. Uh, with our recommendation that no changes be made to the breakfast and lunch prices uh, for the following school year. Okay. And so you're just letting us know that you won't be coming in July to ask? Well, and that that no, I think you there? still have to approve that. Oh, yeah. technically. The same um, okay. I don't think it'll be a problem, I hope. Yeah. Uh, if you want to raise prices, you could, but um, we're not asking for that. We would like to keep it the same. So, any questions from the board? Thank you, Mr. Gasper. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So then moving on to the greenhouse bids. Looks like Mr. Daly is going to be up here for a couple things. You should, uh, you should go ahead and bring it up if you wish. I'm not going to read it. Good evening. Good evening. About a month ago, you'll remember Roger and I came here and we talked about the greenhouse and um, 
and we did put this out to bid um, and you should have information on the bid, uh, uh, bid summary sheet and, and uh, um, an issue paper. The bids came in a little bit higher than we were hoping. Um, we, steel prices, when Roger started this, he, he got, he started getting um, bids like back in 2016 as he was raising these, these funds and grants and such. In the meantime, the steel markets got a little volatile, so um, our, our greenhouse bid was about 20,000 higher than we wanted it to. But anyway, uh, we did get um, the total, total cost of two bids in two parts, greenhouse part, um, and the other, the, uh, other part of it was, uh, um, for the, uh, um, the concrete work and such of $112,962. Um, right now, Roger's got about $79,000, and I think Dr. Mueller said we're going to find some money in next year's budget for that. For the They'll come out of some existing funds that we have within this year's um, dollars that are available, and then in next year dollars for. Um, and actually, we do and and Roger will continue to to fundraise. And actually, work on yeah, grants and, and dollars. actually, today we did. I just. Um, we're putting sending in another grant which actually had some dollars towards the electrical and um, other work plumbing work that we're hoping to get those grant dollars for too so the price keeps coming down but um, I think it's important that we show that the district does support the completion of this project with all the community um, efforts that have been put forth so we're excited to see this so that'll be an agenda item for action next tonight. meeting no it says tonight <coughs> right is it tonight oh, okay even better <laughs> Any questions on the greenhouse at all? And then the next item is the uh, Holman High School dining, student dining furniture. On, I, it sorry, it has it on the agenda, on my note that it's for tonight, but it is not on tonight's. It's for, it's it's for the 29th. The 29th, so. Correct, that's what I thought, okay. So yes, so if there aren't any questions right now, but if you do have questions, let Dr. Mueller know and she can um, get back to you on that. Sure. Okay, then the high school dining. Um, this is also an action item for the next board meeting, I believe. Um, as, as we're going with the, our ongoing work with the high school facilities study, um, one of the areas we know we were lacking in was student seating um, in the dining area. And this is one thing we can do to increase that seating without increasing the size of the building is to get more efficient seating in there. Um, so uh, we went out and got uh, a quote off the state bid, uh, um, state bids from Palmer Hamilton to replace all the seating in that uh, high school dining uh, for a cost of $69,148. This will increase our seating capacity from around 300 to about 360. And no matter what we do with that high school in the future, we still need this furniture as the furniture that's in there now came with the high school 25 odd years ago and it's getting pretty rough shape. So that is one of those areas, as I understand it, in the um, high school facility that's been identified as being over capacity. Correct. And so this would allow for 60 additional seed seats for each lunch period and the lunch periods are broken into is it three three, three lunch three, periods five. so yeah. correct and is that adequate it it is showing um, right now that it would definitely be adequate for our student population that will be coming and that we have with 360 because I want to say we're around three oh can't remember the exact data pieces we're well, not we're not over 300 per lunch right now no we're so, not so we'll definitely it, it should have be enough seating. very adequate for for some yeah. time and then also we'd have a hard time even getting more furniture we yeah, could we, get more, more seating in there if we went with bench style seating but we really didn't want to do that at mm -hmm. the high school level just didn't think it was appropriate and we're going to be adding some pub style tables because kids like to stand sometimes when they eat and doing some other types of more aesthetically pleasing mm -hmm. um, pieces to that yep. so. good 
Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Okay, could you talk a little bit about I, what I really loved was looking at the shapes of tables and where they were going to be and just yeah, some input into how the shape of tables the decision is made is it a social base you know are you trying to mix people up um, because it is a really different configuration which I love a lot but do you know yes. what yeah there they are <laughs> yes. I just think yes. they're very cool does well, the company suggest a certain shape for a particular reason this was this was actually designed by the company to try to ma number one try to maximize the number of seating Okay. The other thing is we still need to accommodate uh, people in wheelchairs or people who need to have regular seats rather than the stools and such on there. And and so they configured this in a way, um, if you look look at there, there's actually some kind of natural pathways yeah. uh, through that lunchroom. Um, and, and those are the places where the people can get to um, an accessible table if they need to. <coughs> um, the, if you don't mind. the other part the, that oh I'm sorry John you no finish. no go ahead you know and of course the table sizes are, are um, you know from the larger tables hold 12 and and uh, and then the small round ones hold six and then uh, and then we have these uh, the what are we call in those the pub, pub tables pub tables I guess is a is a correct way to call it you know we can have <laughs> up to four people around that and they can stand or or sit at those the social dynamics if you eat at the high school are yeah, it's interesting because uh, right now uh, we'll have one table and the kids will get 12 or 14 chairs around one table because that's their social group and then you'll look right next door and we've got this big table and there's two chairs yeah. at it and so we realized that the dynamics of social life at the high school required some small group areas and some big group areas and yet we needed to accept the reality that we got to get a certain number of students into the area as well one of the changes will be that we're looking at is this right Bob this the stage area here and trying to incorporate some seating and increase our capacity by actually allowing some now that's that's not easy and easy to get to like some of the other spaces but as John pointed out wanting to make sure that all feel welcome and that there's spaces where and it's not just one table where a student in a wheelchair can go but there's multiples so that they don't feel like it's always one spot yeah I appreciate the answer and I knew there was input into that because um, lunch rooms can be scary places for kids uh, for many different reasons um, and I loved your answer and I love the input with that so thank you okay. any other questions I make a comment? yes I'm just really thankful that you're doing that um, I just had heard comments earlier this year from some students that were having a very hard time finding a place to sit and for incoming freshmen that can be really intimidating so I'm just really thankful that the high school is being proactive with this all right, thank you. Then, thank you. Then moving on to uh, parent transportation contracts. Beth Pops is here this evening. Hello. Hi, Beth. Hi. I'm here for our yearly parent contracts that we do with our any parent that we would do a contract with. But what we're doing this right now is with our parochial kids and uh, this is for half day students we do provide transportation in the morning and transportation in the afternoon but we don't provide it in the in the during the middle time so we had four parents uh, return those and it's based on a, uh, a formula that we get from DPI on last year's cost per students so the total cost is approximately nine hundred and ninety two dollars and twenty cents that we'll be handing out to those four families Okay. Are there any It'll questions? Next, 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 next agenda. agenda yeah. Any questions on this? This is an annual thing that we do, and it's required by state statute. And um, yes, so we find it to be more economical to do it this way than to physically take a bus and that sort of thing. So definitely. Thank okay. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Then um, base wage rates, Mr. Clark. 
So there are eight issue papers. I'm not going to go through each of them in detail. What I'm going to try to do is, uh, if I find one here, I'll just give an overview of the one. And then my thought is, I'll just point out the differences, because there are uniquenesses to each of the employee groups and different things that were included for each of the employee groups. And I'll describe a little bit of why. So this is the office professional staff um, issue paper. And uh, it starts uh, in the first paragraph reminding the board that uh, these base wage approvals will be covering the period from July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2019. It reminds the board in the second paragraph that it's a 2.3% wage increase that was set up in the budget development parameters. All hourly employees will receive a 26 cents per hour increase. Some classifications will receive more than that, but all will receive at a minimum 26 cents. In addition to that 26 cents increase that they would receive effective July 1st, we're also honoring the longevity increases. And for hourly employees, what that means is after five years, a 3% pay increase. After nine years, 4% above the base. After 13 years, 5%. And after 17 years, 6% above the base or entry level uh, wage. So the base wage increases we're talking about include allowing for those increases as well. In this group, uh, there is also a comparative wage rate support increase for the office professionals. And that would be this 12 cents that's referenced here. That's in addition to the 26 cents. So we looked at regional uh, school district comparables as well as regional private sector comparables and realized that the relative rank of this group deserves something in addition. So the 12 cents per hour would apply to this group of employees. You'll hear in a few moments that some groups did not get an adjustment for comparative and others received differing amounts. <coughs> Within the issue paper, we talk about these being uh, groups that are not represented by an association. So the Act 10 rules uh, of consumer price index covering wages does not apply to these groups. There is one exception, that's our teachers group. And then you'll see here that there's 32 employees in this group, and the total estimated budget impact of the increase is $20,549. That's for this group. Now, I won't open up. Oh, one other thing I should point out with this group, I'm sorry. Um, there is a new classification being created amongst the office professionals group. Just as we have a nutrition team leader in food service or a head custodian, in the custodial maintenance ranks. We've identified the need to have someone serve as the lead in the business office specialist classification. And that's a new classification that's being created this year and is incorporated into the wage schedule. So that's one other unique uh, change to this group. Any questions on the basic layout? Because then I'll just go through the remainder of the issue papers and point out what's different just those things that are different. Can I just clarify that the addition of the new classification didn't affect the base wage Very good all. point, very good point. The board's approval of the base wage increases was separate from this decision to create that classification. And when we met with the employee groups, we were really clear about these types of things so that they didn't feel like, well, somebody being advanced took money out of the wage increase we'd receive. So correct. Thank you. Educational assistance was the next group. Um, the educational assistants received a, an adjustment, a comparative wage rate adjustment of 15 cents per hour. So where the uh, office professionals 12 cents per hour to catch up this group, um, and excuse me, on that office professionals, it was the specialist classification. It wasn't across all classifications, it was the specialist classification that needed catch up in the educational assistance is 15 cents per hour on top of the 26 across the entire group. 113 employees in that classification. 
Executive assistance, there are three individuals in this classification. There is no comparative wage rate adjustment, so it's simply the 26 cents per hour in that group. Um, I'm going to pass by the teachers group for a moment because it's a little bit different because it's not an hourly employee classification. Um, in that group, there are no comparative wage rates, uh, food service, pardon me, there are no comparative wage rates adjustments. There is, however, a recognition that we need to make an adjustment to the high school nutrition team leader position. In studying our comparables, we realized other school districts were recognizing the unique, complex, diverse scope of duties in a high school kitchen that are different from others. And so the recommendation is to have that position receive an additional 24 cents per hour pay differential, but no other comparative adjustments for that group. 33 employees in the food service group. Uh, custodial maintenance mechanics and technicians are all in one group. The 26 cents as per all. And then some unique adjustments. Custodians, 11 cents per hour. Software specialist, 12 cents an hour, and head custodians, 17 cents an hour. And these were all comparative <coughs> to make sure we can attract and retain people in those types of work. There, in addition, was a 24 cents per hour shift differential, much like the head custodian at, uh, pardon me, nutrition team leader at the high school, the head custodian at the high school would receive a 24 cent shift differential. 48 employees in that group. Transportation employees are the last of the hourly employee groups. There are no comparative wage adjustments for that group, so it will be the flat 26 cents per hour across the group. Uh, that group represented by 39 staff members. Any questions on the hourly adjustments? The base 26 cents, giving all of them the longevity, and then some of those comparative adjustments, and then the two positions receiving the of well, the diversity of the high school positions. Questions on those? No questions. Go on. So uh, then uh, talking about the uh, teachers group, this is a represented group. The board can uh, not negotiate with the group anything greater than the 2.13% consumer price index urban. However, the board may unilaterally do more than that. And the recommendation is that the board do more than that. In fact, a 2.563% total package increase. Now you can see the distribution of that described in the issue paper. Longevity steps would be honored so that year of experience earns them an adjustment on the wage schedule. Unlike the hourly employee groups where it's every five, four, four years, um, in this group it's an annual increase whenever the board provides that adjustment. And then um, lane advancement uh, for earning additional degrees or credits towards uh, degrees. Um, that wage increase would be honored. And then lastly, just a little over a half a percent increase in each wage scale. Uh, wage cell schedule. Scale. That yeah. didn't make sense, but <laughs> it's the cell on the schedule. <coughs> So that's the recommendation for that group, 342 employees. So a total of 600 and? Total of, uh, well for the all dollar groups. amount? All groups, no, all groups, number of employees. All groups, $655,000 in wage increases. Oh, but si how, many, how many employees? Oh, 620, 640, Melissa? 640 yeah, approximately. approximately yeah. Yeah. And then the last group is the administrative and supervisors group. <coughs> and in this group, it's the flat 2.3%, uh, no special adjustments um, applied equally across all. Those that would get a longevity increase, that occurs once in the career of an administrator or supervisor in the district at 10 years. <coughs> and there are a couple of people achieving that benchmark. Are there any questions? Chris, did I miss anything? Oh, you did. Big thank you to Chris and uh, Melissa, uh, Julie, John, Mike, Beth, all uh, met with the employee groups. I think you heard us say before that this is, um, you could do this easily by not meeting with employees, but um, <coughs> you feel it's better to spend the time meeting with them, sharing all the evidence we have, 
um, telling them that we don't think they should hear this after the fact. They should hear what's being planned beforehand. So thank you to all of you for spending the time on that. Well, thank you to, all, to yourself, Mr. Clark, and everyone you mentioned for doing that because it is important to take that time and to communicate with our employees. They're our most valued resource. I think you recognize that, and we appreciate the, your willingness to do that. So thank you very much. This is not for action tonight. Correct. but. The next board meeting? Yes. Then moving on to employee handbook language. Dental insurance. It's me. <laughs> um. Oh. I have Mr. Clark. The yeah. voluntary dental. <laughs> yes. yes, you're on still. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Clark. <laughs> so you know when we came to the board and we were talking about the uh, health insurance plan designs and the things we could do for employees in the upcoming year, one of the things we mentioned that we have um, a number of employees who don't meet the hours of work threshold to qualify for district dental insurance. The recommendation is that beginning July 1st, we actually provide a dental insurance plan, although funded by the employee, it is group dental insurance, so they'll be able to achieve it at a lower premium rate, and we will allow them to pay the premiums on a pre-tax deduction from their wages. So that makes it, again, less expensive. And our employees uh, that have been asking for this show deep appreciation for the possibility, and it's our recommendation that we make that possible for our employees starting July 1st. We'll see how this goes for a couple of years. We're a little bit concerned about adverse selection, where the only people who sign up are the ones who have huge dental bills, and that can drive the premiums up quickly. But we need to try it. We need to try to do something for them. OK. And again, this is not on tonight's, although there is handbook language on tonight's agenda. This is not the. The yeah. one time. And I do want to say that we are um, rolling this out to our employees because we need to give them time to think about it before the enrollment period comes. So if you hear from an employee that it's out there and we're talking about it, no, we haven't gotten cart before the horse. We, we know you have to approve it, but we want to start educating people. Okay, thank you. Then moving on to Dr. Mueller with CESA 4 Contracted Services. So annually, we um, determine what services we're going to use for the upcoming school year through our CESA 4 partnership. And I'm going to just show you here quick. Um, our services are definitely based upon our needs, and our needs change over time. So um, what you'll see here is we actually have some things um, upcoming this upcoming school year, which I'll explain a little bit, that we will be servicing with CESA and some things that will come off um, that we had contracted with them in the past. Um, the REACT is actually um, going to be some professional development. They're going to help provide our middle school teachers with writing, so they're very excited about that. That's an area they're focusing on. Um, the nonviolent crisis intervention that is so that we can actually provide a trainer to come here and train our teachers which is much more fiscally responsible than paying for them to go to CESA individually to get the training for that um, the curriculum development in support um, we are focusing on professional learning communities and that's one of our areas and um, CESA is working with us in our leadership and some of our um, further into de development of that and that's what that expense is for um, and each year the curriculum and instruction department determines what those areas for professional development will be and puts funds towards us so it just happens to be on our CESA contract in, in this year um, career and technical education leadership um, we must have someone certified as what's called an LVEC with Mr. Bear's retirement we will not have that person so we will be contracting with CESA to help provide some of that service for us in that and they help it helps us with our grants and um, information with that um, wise data services that we are transferring into that just because of um, that is new with how they're doing all of the exchanges of data 
through portals now. So that's for training, and um, they can attend different parts at CESA for that. Um, our um, specialists that work within Infinite Campus especially. Um, and then again, student services support and development. Um, paying a small fee versus ha paying individually two or $300 when people go and use those um, supports and developments out of our student services department. As you can see, we are no longer getting educator effectiveness. We feel like we have a handle on that. And we can handle that now. And also academic career and planning support. Um, our staff has done an amazing job, and they're pretty much the leaders in the area, I feel, in that. So they no longer are needing that support. <coughs> Excuse me. And then they just changed the name of the special education services, so just changed line items. Within special education services, the amounts change depending on the type of students you have, because we do contract out for our hearing impaired and <coughs> other vision impairment and other services that we need through CESA versus hiring a full-time employee to do that. And if you have questions, Jill can answer those for you. <laughs> um, so with that, you'll see the amount looks like quite a bit more. But actually, last year was a lower year than previous years um, in our services. And this year, we're just we're allocating um, dollars with CESA support versus sending people out to conferences and doing other things. So it's just a reallocation um, of dollars in that manner. So these aren't new dollars that you're needing. These are correct said, reallocation yep. of current funds. Definitely so. It's just different needs in different areas, and so the department leaders have determined which services are needed. Any questions? Any questions on that? Okay, thank you. All right. And again, this is on the next meeting agenda. We'll be very busy. Then, the candidates for graduation and the 2019 graduation dates. So everyone's probably wondering how many graduates are we planning for? Well, you'll have 283 hands to shake at least, if not more or less. No, no. We're, the following 283 students are candidates for graduation, which is on Saturday, May 26th at 1 o'clock at the La Crosse Center. So that's when our graduation ceremony will be had, and we here are all of our candidates. So that is for approval this evening. So yes, that is on the consent agenda this evening. And for Barb, um, we would invite you to join us on stage and to participate and watch those students walk across. I know also as last year's, because these are students from the previous year, Lisa and Anita will be or are invited to participate as well um, as previous members of the board. So we'd love to have all board members there. It's a kind of a celebration day and as I always say, Watching their smiling faces walk across that stage is what makes all of these things uh, really worth it. And, and they all um, are smiling, so it's a good day. So that, and then the tw 2019 graduation date. Did you say? Oh, gosh, no, I didn't. Um, the 2019 graduation date is May 25th. So it's always that same Saturday right before Memorial Day. So. Right. And that is also on the consent agenda this evening as well. So we like to let people know ahead of time when graduation is. So, any questions? Okay. Then the next thing, do you want to just do it from there and I'll just stay here? Because the next sure. thing is the board vacancy. Why, sure. Um, oh, here, let me get up the presentation. So, <coughs> as you're aware, ooh, sorry. Ooh, this is on reports and discussion, so no action, no motions will be taken, but just to go through this so that there's a clear understanding of the process. And I know it was interesting that we just had reaffirmed the board policy not too long ago, actually right. got into a, few, a little bit more detail. Was it this last fall or? Yes, filling yes, the board vacancy. Board vacancy. So on uh, the 19th of April? We received a notice um, from Lisa Collins that she was resigning from the Board of Directors and did, because she didn't give us any specific date, it was the date that of, of, her, of us receiving, receiving. it. Yep. So um, 
we posted the notice. We basically went to the policy quickly and looked at the, the policy and how could we um, fill this as quick as possible. And um, we filed the vacancy notice on 424. And the 8th was the deadline for applications. Um, the candidate then, according to the policy, interviews a board um, and elects and votes for the new board member. They would be then voted or announced at that board meeting. And the, under the current timeline, that appointed board member would serve uh, the remainder of the unexpired term, which the election um, <laughs> coming up next year, April of 19, is when Lisa would have been running for re-election again. So they would then have to file for re-election on that date. Um, random drawing will be done to de decide the order of interviews of the candidates. That's how we would determine. Um, which candidate we will be asking question. They can make a statement on behalf of their candidacy as well. Very, very similar to what we did with the board when we do the um, forum, the board forum, very similar. And I know that we want this to be succinct. I think we talked and this is up for discussion. I don't, I think we want to maybe have a set of maybe five or six questions but wanted to provide an opportunity for each board member if they had a question or two to ask all board members or all candidates, um, they would be able to do that too. But we'll probably have an established, I'll have an established set of questions to ask as well. Um, but we would ask board members if they had a question or two because we don't want this to be a very lengthy thing. Uh, board members will vote for one of the candidates and the way that the policy was written was that you would sign your um, ballot. So you can vote for one of the four with a signed written ballot. That's the language right from the policy. Um, and then the candidate that receives a majority vote on the first ballot or balloting will continue until a candidate has received a majority. And a majority would be of the, of the board members, I was gonna say students, of the board members present. So if we have six board members present, a, a majority would be four. If we have five board members present, a majority would be three. And four would be three as well. Uh, because we would need to have a quorum of our board and a quorum of six is four. So everybody under it is a lot of math <laughs> so <laughs> so one of the things to discuss um, is open versus closed our policy allows for an open versus closed session and we did ask for a ruling from um, the school board association and you know in what case would we have a closed session and if discuss discussion regarding the board candidate and reviews are about issues which, if discussed in public, would likely have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to um, in such, and then they have the state statute. And so my recommendation, and then just to get um, everybody's feedback again, is that let's have an open session. I don't think there's any need just based on what we know for a closed session. And, Again, consensus of the board I'm seeing head shaking. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do that, we'll have an open session. So the next item is when. And according to the board vacancy that we published, um, we wanted to have it filled by the 23rd. Right. And so that would leave us a week from today that we could ask all candidates to come the 21st um, and if so if board members are if we can have a quorum of board members present that's kind of the recommended date would be the 21st so this is held as a special meeting yes, basically it and it's very similar to our candidate forums that where you do a random drawing and then ask questions and then vote yes in public and announce. and I know one of the candidates indicated that they will be traveling but has offered to answer questions via phone, and I think we want to make that opportunity available to them. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. I, yep. Oh, I just have a decorum question. Yes. Um, I don't know. Are we picking a picking a date for this? And if we are, 
do I have permission to turn my cell phone on to see if my I mean, yes. are we looking at yes. times, well I think or? unless you feel that unless you don't if you want to take a look if we don't have a quorum for the 21st okay. we would have to do it and I know some people are out this week yet so we felt like the 21st or the 22nd so I, I think I do want to look at the 21st yes. so if I turn this on you're yes. okay with that yes if you want to take a minute to look when I asked him um, I, in an email where, and he didn't resp hasn't responded to me. So when he sent an email saying he was going to be gone, I right away asked him when he would return, and I haven't re received a response from him. So, yeah. Who's going to make the list of questions to ask, and where are those going to come from? Well, I think we've got a list of questions that we usually use as fillers for the. Um, Candidate, uh, candidate forum. forum and so we'll take some that would be appropriate asking them the very basic things Gary asking them about their background some of the questions may be similar to what they've already answered in their applications that you've received a copy of their applications but if you would allow me to develop that list of five to six questions and again if you want to come up with one or two questions to ask it would they would be very um, I want to say generic but very um, fair-minded I think to all and Kate is there a suggested time for the you said 21st the only reason I mentioned that is you and I both have student yep, achievement it would have to be after the student achievement so it's probably going to be a seven o'clock meeting thank you so, and then if so you were saying one of the candidates will be traveling is that what yes. you're saying mm -hmm. okay so then if that person can um, participate via traveling can a board member participate via traveling or they could participate but they wouldn't be able to vote we don't have any language allowing anyone to vote okay. um, I just didn't know yeah. what the policy yeah. is yeah but I think okay. if that's the the um, situation if mr. Cruz is still traveling if he wants to if we need to get a conference call kind of thing and he'd like to participate absolutely yes I know I'm not available this day but should I try to get it covered to come to this um, if you would like to have a student rep participate certainly like should I like okay so what it is is I work that day should I get someone to cover oh. and then come? oh um, you know you let's talk about it off I think if you want that experience of seeing that because this hasn't happened for a long time for our school district so this is kind of new to us as well so yeah let's talk about that off to the side but if you want to have that experience that would be probably a good thing okay. and there's a band concert going. I know. My son's leaving. <laughs> I think the end of the year though we're running into I think something every evening every there's week. something every evening every so evening. we just um, it's pretty common we have meetings on Monday evenings so I yeah. think um, you know is Ms. why that Ms. Apologies, say we have to fill this vacancy I think we, yes we have to we must fill the vacancy um, we posted a timeline assuming to fill by the May 29th board meeting um, was what we posted in our posting in that and then you must allow for five days in case the person who would get the candidacy can has five days to decide if maybe they didn't want to do the candidacy after they would be um, elected or chosen I guess right. would be the proper word um, I mean that would be a board discussion if you were going to wait at a lengthier time but I would have to make sure that that would be okay that we posted our posting like we had posted it well I that think the reason another. we redid the policy was be and actually the way the language was it was actually. one or two sentences but it was because it came down from the states that required yeah. us to have a, a it, policy that showed how we were going to fill vacancies and they say the statute that we it, fill that vacancy it does it says you should fill it within 60 days okay yeah 
So then where did the 23rd come in? I guess I'm not following. Um, so May 29th is the date that we would like them to be at the first board meeting. Oh, got and it. And then they need five. We have to allow five days okay, that before that. So that's where the 23rd comes. Got it. Yeah, and so that's why we're looking at Monday Trying because to figure usually out we have Mondays set are kind of set aside for special meetings. And then do you do 7 p.m. again or do you do earlier since it's like a forum? Or I think we'll do 7 work? because we've got other board committees meeting until 6 or 6.30, so. I know Friday nights are, they're not even open, so. <laughs> and I know if that committee, that committee has a lot of work that it needs to get through in order to end the year, so we wouldn't want to look at not scheduling that. So we're basically following board policy. One other comment, and that was, uh, that I asked uh, Mrs. Muller, and that was um, three, of the, three of the four candidates have failed uh, uh, election bids on the school board. <clears throat> My question to her was, if, if that's true, is it, is it ethical or is it legally uh, responsible to place them on the school board at our discretion once they've, once they've failed an election bid? And I got the feedback that no, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, illegal or it wasn't, the legal counsel apparently said it was fine to do that. <clears throat> but my concern was that the, the three of those candidates have failed um, election bids on this board, and we're gonna, we might elect one of them to, to go on our board. That that concerns me. I think that's a, a point you can make that evening, Mr. Dunlap. I would say that there are many candidates that have run and failed and then run again. Abraham Lincoln is one of those. So. Um. <laughs> Run, <laughs> running, uh, running is one thing, and being appointed is another. Well. And I think that's why the policy reads that they must then, when the election time comes up, their seat is up and they must, if they're going to continue, they must go through an election. Right. And that's... that's So it's for a short period of time. Right. It would be for that year and they would have to file then in December to run again for another election and then depending on who their opposition is, sometimes that um, can determine whether or not people win or lose. So, okay. So... Um, I think we're good then. I just wanted to have this out in the open so that we all understood the process. Again, it is very similar to the process that we have followed in the past. Uh, the policy did set some timelines that we hadn't had, um, and I think that is because it came down from the state that we had to establish those that policy and how to fill it within those 60, 60 days. days. So. Yeah. so then, consent agenda. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we have would like to introduce a new employee that oh. will be joining us on our leadership team. Sure. So one of the items under personnel yes. um, is... So if Nick Baki, could you come on over? <laughs> Nick is joining us at the high school. He is going to be our new associate principal at the high school. And so um, he's here with us this evening. And so if you don't mind, you could just share a little bit. We're, sure. we're very excited to have him on the team and um, be a part of it. So, you know, we're going to have a new team over there. Wayne will be our principal. We have, actually, we have Nick Weber, and then, well, we, we're determining if it's Nicholas or Nick. They're trying to figure out how they're going to all <laughs> name themselves. So. Uh, yeah, so my name is Nick Baki, um, and I am uh, extremely excited to be able to join the Homeless School District um, and hopefully be able to help a positive, have a positive impact on not only the staff, but obviously the students here. Um, it's tremendous being able to have just the opportunity to come in here tonight before I started my um, actual position formally to listen to some of the groups um, at the middle school level and sharing some of the things that are going on at the high school that's really exciting and clearly shows showcases what we uh, or what you guys already are doing here and I'm excited to be a part of it so thanks. Thank you Nick. We're glad to have you part of our team too. And Gary, I would say, you know, feather in his cap, he comes from Cashton, so. Oh, no. <laughs> Gary is a Elroy person, so. I'd like to pull that off the consent. <laughs> <laughs> so consent agenda, we have six items on the agenda this evening. If you would like to have anything considered separately, you may. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent as presented. So moved. Is there a second? And any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda um, as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Then we'll move on to board member reports and discussion. <coughs> um, if you have any committee reports you'd like to share or any comments, please do. So Rebecca Reber, we'll start oh, with man. you. 
<laughs> oh, building and grounds met tonight. I think Gary's going to give a fabulous report on that. Okay, right, Gary. Oh, Apparently, it was a no, it was a, a very good yeah, meeting. Was. A lot of um, teachers and um, partic community participants tonight um, gave really good input on their preferences and recommendations for the high school. So okay. it was a really good meeting. Anything else? No. Oh. Okay, Mr. Dunlap. Yeah, it was a very exciting meeting. We had a, a lot of coaches and a lot of public people here to, at the meeting, and and some of them voiced some comments. Uh, we learned some really interesting things uh, uh, about the wrestling and gymnastics space. Uh, for, for example, we're the only one in the MVC who does not have a specific wrestling space. Um, <clears throat> and we also we also heard from them some safety issues uh, with training, where, where they've been training and how they've been training. And they spend uh, twelve thousand dollars every couple of years to replace the mats, and a lot of the damage in those mats are because they're rolled every every night. Uh, those are all the really good things. Uh, as a group, we decided to. Uh, you already heard. We, we decided to get some research numbers on uh, new high school costs. Uh, we also uh, discussed getting some numbers on high school on the uh, high school being changed to a middle school versus building a middle school. We also talked about filling space needs and unfunded needs, uh, uh, doing some re research to see how much of that was going to cost. And we asked the staff to uh, sit down and try to figure out, it. and it's a tough, a tough question to ask them, how many square feet they thought they needed to improve the space as far as lockers and the shower area. So it was a really good meeting. We got lots of things done. and. And unfortunately, we threw a lot of stuff over the fence to administration to, <laughs> to, to gather information for us. Yeah, she's, they were all very glad to see that. <laughs> and then I'd like, I'd like to congratulate the, uh, the student council members, uh, middle and high school. Those the middle schoolers, it seems like every year they come in and they're just, they, they're just amazing. I mean, $13,500, um, that's an amazing amount to, to, to raise. And then what they did with it was, was admirable. So they would be congratulated. Um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Barb Wettstein, any comments? Um, I'm just learning what's going on and I'm enjoying it. So, <laughs> hey, that's it. <laughs> well, good, that's a good thing to hear. And um, Kate Mayer? Oh, sure. One, one thing is just, it was, it's always so good to walk in here and see so many public citizens being involved and I know that that also happened on the meeting that that you had this past week um, I love that uh, that's what we need <laughs> you know that makes our job easier um, it also is really interesting to me to hear people as young as the middle schoolers speaking about unfunded needs <coughs> I heard that also a couple of weeks ago as I attended town of Holland um, had their annual meeting and every government entity has unfunded needs and for a 13 year old to be speaking about that you know it, it is reality it's unfunded needs are in our whole household budget and we certainly have them too but uh, I'm just very proud of them uh, a question for Sydney not to put you on the spot so I don't need the answer tonight but um well, and, and I guess also um, Caitlin Clausen is gone. She is the advisor of <coughs> middle school. I'm wondering, as we look at our district, and I also wonder that about our board makeup, our district, um, what it looks like in terms of gender and race and all kinds of identities. Does our student council have an active way to seek representatives of all those different kinds of categories and and as I'm asking you to again I say as a Board of Ed you know we don't look like everyone who lives in in Holman but I but I think as a public um, school district I just I just kind of wonder about that and again I don't expect an answer this evening but if that's something you want to or if you've thought about that before well, I know at least are you just, like you're talking about the student council at the high school yeah let's start with that well I know the student council at the high school is kind of I think anyone who wants to be on it can be on it so the people who want to be represented on the student council I guess are but on the middle school I know you have to apply and some people do get denied but 
Yeah, that's all I kind of know about. Right, and I, I think I knew that answer, but I, then the second question would be anyone can apply, but I wonder how many people do. Yeah to make sure that because that is your that is your voice that also comes to us which is kind of important and I'm not sure that that we have any other voice of groups that come to us as a board I think student council is the representative voice they can be yeah but I mean I they think usually they go are. through our student rep yeah. through yeah through our student rep but just a thought, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've been attending a lot of things about diversity and La Crosse County is getting, um, I think, very supportive about that. And I think it would be good for us to be on top of that as well. Um, let's see. All the pies, just that's my favorite part. <laughs> of student <laughs> council with the middle school. And I remember seeing posts of that way back when. It was like November maybe, right, when they did that? Yeah it was for the Thanksgiving dinner that's tremendous. 120. I know that's yeah. that's yeah very cool <laughs> okay then Sydney um, I was just kind of gonna say the same as Barb just listening is entertaining and <laughs> maybe next time I'll have something to say the seniors bear, uh, bearing down this last couple of weeks and really working hard <laughs> Okay, well thanks Sydney for the honesty. That's what we like to hear. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, so let's see. I've got a couple things. I know that I also enjoy the student council and they have student council in the elementary school. It might be kind of fun sometime to have them come even to yeah. report. That would be cute. Um, I know my student council, the member that lives in my household she would be mad at me if I didn't say evergreen really needs lockers evergreen needs lockers maybe for the fourth and fifth graders but that's her thing and I just say it because I say it um, I know that I've been approached and there's been conversation about the trap shooting there was some media coverage of the lacrosse schools I think trap shooting and as you know we've got some groups that are interested in that and um, I did share with some of them that what what we really look for and Mr. English you may be hearing is if this is student driven that a lot of that you know should be student driven and so uh, but there are questions and as we look at this it's not just trap shooting but it is bowling and it is rodeo and it is a number of other things that groups are looking to affiliate with the school district and so that I think we're going to talk a little bit about that at the student achievement and learning committee just briefly because we've got some other things but I think we're going to continue that conversation uh, Mr. Englerth came last month and we pre he presented on that and we'll continue to have that conversation but you know there are things like liability like hiring and who's responsible for those advisors if something goes wrong um, do we just lend them our name because that might make it more appeasable to people wanting to become a part of that club or that organization um, or do we go through that hiring and then and so from most of the school board members who have been here remember we had underfunded or not funded not fully funded co-curricular activities that when the initial parents who said we really want to do this and we'll pay for everything but let us have a soccer team or let us have ice hockey or let us have this group and then 10 years later it's turned over it's a whole totally different group of parents and now they're wondering well it's not fair why aren't you paying for this group we you're paying for this group so I know that mr. Engler that's one of the things we talked about is there a way to have that conversation annually if we would approve those groups um, to annually remind them that this is done and has is there because of or as a school board if they go through the process and say we want to align with them then should we be responsible for funding them and that's going to be a question that's probably going to come to you um, so philosophically if it's 
a program that we say is good enough for the school district, then should we be funding them? So it's something for you to think about. Um, I did have an opportunity to go to the wax museum, which was very delightful. Fourth graders did a little, it was like a wax museum. So they had the button and you pushed the button and they came alive and they told the story about who they were. And young women did things like Bell Case La Follette and um, men did just a variety. I can't, the one young man that did his, it was really fun. And then they had furriers and, and it was about the pioneer kind of time, but early politics too in Wisconsin. And it was just a very, very fun, fun thing to see that whole um, cafe area um, filled with these young people who had costumes, very much thought out. And again, these are fourth graders and they are doing this and it was just very cool to see that. Um, wrestlers, I will say, um, I shared this story, but you weren't here. Um, Jason, but I shared the story of my granddaughter who when wrestlers were going to state team, they came to Evergreen and my, my daughter who is deceased, she was a statistician for the wrestling team when that Mr. Rudrud was the coach. And my granddaughter found her jacket that week and it was just kind of like, she found her jacket that it takes a lot, it took a lot in the day to earn that jacket and Jess had it and Lucy wore it to school and as she was getting to school that day the wrestlers were coming off the bus and I don't know if they she talked to them or who told the story but when they got to the second floor they were asking for Lucy and she was in a class but that got back to her and it just talks about the character of your program and I just so appreciated that um, and it's we see that as you hear about the food drive and all that you do all along and I know wrestling and gymnastics I have a special place both of those sports for me and I agree that we need to look at some solutions and find some solutions and whether it's a referendum for just that facility or other common spaces or it's a referendum for a bigger school um, I, I can assure you we'll be very thoughtful in what we come up with um, keeping in mind that it's not just about what happens on the athletic mat but it's also about the character of the classroom so um, and then Alice training happened today at Evergreen as well and I just kind of asked a couple questions and it must they must have done a really good job of soothing them because it was no big deal to her she just said oh yeah we did some stuff we didn't get to do the barricade but they did some stuff so that's what it was tomorrow at um, Holman is a program called Straightforward. I'm participating in it, but also Holman staff are participating in it. And it's really um, because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. It's a program that Tara, who was at the middle school as an intern or practicum student, um, I know her in the recovery community. She's very good. She's working towards her master's program at the Turbo, but she's kind of spearheading that and, and somehow got me to participate. And there's other, a really good, group I think there's staff from Holman that are participating in the panel um, but it's at from 6 to 8 tomorrow and it's going to be uh, uh, start with a video is it NPR or Wisconsin I they they had a really well done video that I've heard many good things I'm excited to see it I haven't seen it yet but then they're gonna be some people talking about substance use and mental health and the connection and what can we do and how can we recognize those kind of things so it's really important so that's all I had for tonight it was a few items so let's just move on and I would just note that you had personnel and governance committee notes um, board meeting schedule the 15th tomorrow is the Spring Academy in West Salem for WASB. Uh, senior banquet is the 23rd. The 24th is the retiree reception at 3.30 in the district office here. The 26th is the graduation ceremony. And if you haven't let Stacy know, please let her know if you're going to be able to attend and participate or not. And then the 29th, which is a Tuesday, we have our board meeting because of Memorial Day being Monday. So with that, if there's nothing else to come before the board, then I would have um, Kate read the closed session motion. Yeah, I'd be happy to. 
Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby moves to adjourn into closed session for the purpose of discussion relative to the expulsion of student pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.851F and for deliberation concerning the matter as per Wisconsin Statute 19.851A. Okay, is there a second? Second. And would you do roll call then, Kate? Yes. Rebecca Reber. Gary Dunlap? Yes. Barb Wettstein? Here. Um, Cheryl Hancock? Yes. And myself, yes. Okay, the motion passes. We will be in.